there's a, a mega drought in the United States. And so we have to start seriously thinking about for sure conservation of water. The, the issue of decorative lawns in a desert and swimming pools, golf courses. I mean, the list is long, but we have to really say, okay, maybe that wasn't the right way to go in the desert. <laughs> These locals have had their water supply cut off for months. 500 households in Arizona's Rio Verde foothills have never had running water. They depend on the neighboring city of Scottsdale to fill up their tankers. But the city has decided it no longer has enough to spare. Scottsdale's water comes from the Colorado River, but a 20-year drought in the region has severely reduced its flow. Now residents in the Rio Verde foothills are having to pay vast sums of money to get their water from further afield. What I used to charge four and a half to five cents a gallon, I'm now charging 11 cents a gallon. And I don't even know if that's enough at this point. So people have gone, have getting, they're getting shocking bills. If they regain normal water supply, Wendy and Vance estimate they will be paying between $1,000 and $1,200 a month. In the meantime, they have started collecting rainwater to supplement their needs. Usually what we do every day is we fill all of these um, gallon jugs and we set them by the, the toilets in our bathrooms and we basically put them in the back of the tank and we're able to flush our toilet then. The only thing that starts making people improve on their conservation is the cost of water starts getting higher. And, I, and then I also think too people understand that a drought isn't good, but it doesn't really hit them until I think it starts hitting their wallet. Further down the Colorado River in the desertic part of Southern California, farmers produce crops year round to feed the population but bringing water to these fields is extremely costly. This unit here, half mile long, is almost $300,000. So it's a huge capital expenditure, but these are what we're doing in order to um, try to conserve water and still stay viable. Farmers here grow alfalfa, a water-intensive crop which takes up 30% of the land in California's Imperial Valley. Growing it is a lucrative business, but it has a major effect on the river's water supply causing tensions with neighboring states. A handful of farmers take as much water from the Colorado River as all of Nevada and Arizona combined. We are willing to work with our fellow interstate water users and our basin states to see how to address the long-term problem, but we're not going to sacrifice our community for urban sprawl and urban development in other areas. The US West is not alone in its water access challenges. All over the world, tensions are brewing. The UN estimates that 2.3 billion people globally live in water-stressed countries, and the situation has the potential to get even worse. As human-caused climate change worsens, droughts are becoming more frequent, longer and more severe. Water gets a lot less attention than climate change. Water, it seems, very much taken for granted. And even when you, you talk about a global water crisis or you know, uh, serious droughts in certain areas of the world, it doesn't seem to affect people and decision makers and politicians as directly as it should. The distribution of water resources could become a major issue in the years to come and cause international tensions if countries do not reach agreements, says the UN. I've never been so worried on the issue of water knowing that we breached the planetary boundaries on water, that we broke the water cycle, and that, that water insecurity is undermining not water, but every sustainable development goal, every ambition we set, the horizon we set forward in 2015. Uh, at the same time, I am also amazingly empowered by the many initiatives from the world. Initiatives are springing up everywhere. Here in South Africa, this engineer has developed a treatment that purifies acid mine drainage into drinkable water. 
This can be applied to a number of the mines in order to treat their acid mine drainage to drinking stage. We will be solving uh, two things, which is the availability of water, since you know that we have um, experienced in South Africa water restrictions. So this can serve about a million people, especially in the greater Johannesburg, which is very close to 20% uh, population of, 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 of Johannesburg. In addition to clean water becoming increasingly difficult to access, nearly half of the world's population is living without safely managed sanitation. It's the case of these villagers who live in floating houses in this vast polluted lake in northwest Cambodia. <laughs> Around 100,000 people live on the lake and use the water for cooking, washing and bathing, risking diarrhoea or even more severe waterborne diseases. Now, a local social enterprise has rolled out floating toilets to filter waste so that water can be safely reused. But the high cost of installation means for now they are available to only a lucky few. These circumstances are a far cry from the sustainable development goals set by the UN in 2015. One was to ensure access to water and sanitation for all by 2030. Climate change is making an already complex situation even harder to manage. Worst case scenario is quite simple. Populations, whether it's cities or even rural populations, cannot survive if they don't have enough water. So it will be uh, an exodus. An exodus of people will have, you can call them environmental refugees or water refugees, but they simply can't stay if, there's, if they do not have uh, enough water supply to survive. It will either, they'll have to move or they will die. The World Resources Institute estimates that securing water for our societies by 2030 could cost just over 1% of global GDP.